Oh man, what a trip. I still can't believe how freaking tall Antony C is. Oh hey Blackbird, how do things go here? Well, the place hasn't burned down so pretty good, I guess? Excellent, excellent. Now I did get your fanfic signed by Ian and Claire. Do you want that now or you want me to wait to unpack? I'll wait for you to unpack and get settled in. Uh, thanks for doing that again. Really appreciate it. Eh, no problem. I got to get my picture taken with them, so everything balances out. Anyway, is there anything else we need to get to? Well, before you came in, I was about to do a video about Sunset and Saitwai. Ugh, you are never going to let me go on how you turned me into a sunlight shipper, are you? <laughs> nope. And come on, you gotta admit, they look ridiculously cute together. Eh, for the sake of appropriateness, yes, we'll go with cute. What kind of video are we talking about? Why Sunset deserves Saitwai. Ah, uh, yes. Instead of him. Yes, he who shall not be named. Actually, no. Let's name him so we can make fun of him. Timber Spruce, your time has come. Blackbird, list off his offenses. Wait, shouldn't we do the intro first? Oh, right. Sorry. I'm just really eager to rip this guy to shreds. Yeah, me too. And you want to know why? Why? Here's why. Pony, welcome back to Pony Talk. Jeez, what the hell was that for? For the Simon Miller reference, of course. I'm pretty sure at this point it's like a law or something. You gotta smack your head when you start a video that way. Nor somebody else's in this case. Simon M Ugh, whatever. So, what are Timber's offenses? You mean aside from being a major douche? Well, besides that, and the fact that he clearly was only looking to score with Saitwai, there's one other thing I don't like about him that we'll get to later. Tell me, Blackbird, how hard did Timber have to work in order to win over Saitwai? Uh, not at all. He threw out a few incredibly cheesy and lame uh, pickup lines. He told that sob story about wanting to go to the mall, and, okay, to his credit, he did try to save the campers with that axe. Nah, that's about it. Which, of course, anyone could have done so it's not too special. Not to mention how incredibly convenient it was that he was a geology expert or whatever that happened to work at the camp that CHS was going to. You know, at least Flash helped prove Princess Twilight was innocent from wrecking the dance in the first Equestria Girls movie. He may have been incredibly one-dimensional, but that's at least something that's worthy of at least a dance in return, wouldn't you say? Plus, he never got off the MASSIVE creeper vibes that Timber does. Lest we forget. I mean, seriously, that should not work that well. But that's exactly how he comes across. I do think maybe they're trying to go for charming, but they landed firmly into creepy. Like I said, those vibes told me he just wanted to score with Saitwai while CHS was at the camp. And you get the vibe, it's not the first time he's done that. I mean, Sideswai put it best herself. Oh, I bet you say that to all the campers. And I do, Sideswai. I really, really do. Ugh, I hate cliché lines. Me too. And while I'm sure we could go on and on and probably will about what a horrible character Timber Spruce is, let's focus on what this video is actually supposed to be about. What Sunset has done to deserve being with Saitwai. Yep. And we actually have to go all the way back to the climax of Friendship Games where we had the nice reversal of the climax from the first film. It was Sunset here that helped Saitwai break away from Midnight Sparkle and open up to the friendship the Humane Six were willing to share with her. Exactly. And for me personally, this is when the Sunlight Ship really started to set sail. I mean, go back and watch the, the Friendship Games. Sunset can barely keep her hands off Sidewai. Oh man, you're right. But in all seriousness, I could totally see where this friendship slowly morphed into something more with Sunset being Sidewai's mentor on opening up and stop shoving her nose into books or computer screens. Then we move on to Legend of Everfree where not only do the two share a tent, but look how hard Sunset is trying to calm her down and be with her when the magical energy increases. And that there's nothing to be afraid of. Not to mention that she's basically helping Saitwai deal with her magical PTSD. Which is probably something she went through after the first movie. So right there, the two already share a strong, unique connection. Something much more personal than just knowing about rocks. 
And then just look at all these moments where Saitwai is too afraid to tell Sunset what's wrong. Sunset is genuinely concerned and actually looks a bit hurt that Saitwai refuses to say anything, almost like she feels that Saitwai doesn't trust her enough even after all she's helped her with. Plus, Sunset is also there to answer questions about magic to the rest of their friends and even follow Saitwai out into the dead of night to make sure she's okay. Dedicated friend or even stronger feelings, take your pick. Oh, I know which one I pick. Well, you are the one who came up with the video topic, after all. Yes. Yes, I did. But seriously, these two have such amazing chemistry together, it's hard not to ship them. They just feel right together. Certainly more than the massively forced Timberlight ship that's in the movie, which, I'm sorry, for me, comes down to just one thing. <laughs> oh, that's gonna play real well with some people. But really, that's just how it comes off to me. Eh, sure. But don't forget that Sunset actually puts her foot down and goes with Saitwai to the cave whether she likes it or not. Not even knowing what dangers, magical or non-magical, could be awaiting them, Sunset is willing to stick by her side. So, willing to face dangers of any kind for Sunset, and Timber has... rock knowledge. Yeah, but honestly my frustration comes from the fact that every piece of literature I've ever consumed has told me that everything Sunset and Saitwai went through, from Friendship Games to all the events of Legend of Everfree, says that they should be together by the end of that movie. Just remember though, Blackbird, some countries that MLP airs in won't allow that. Who knows, maybe those countries could blacklist the show forever because of it, like how Family Guy is blacklisted in a lot of areas. It sucks that it has to be that way, but that's just how it is for now. Maybe if Timber actually put in some damn work and effort, we wouldn't be so upset. Well, maybe, but they could have also just not done it at all. That's my other big frustration this whole thing. The EG series just is not able to do relationships very well. At least not the intended ones. Part of the reason why people hated Flash so much is because of how much of a forced romantic interest he was. And it really did seem like they learned their lessons with him with uh, Rainbow Rocks and Friendship Games and even his first appearance in Legend of Everfree. But then Timber came around and started it all over again. It's like catching a friend who quit smoking with a cigarette in their mouth. That actually brings me back to that one major thing I hate about Timber, Blackbird. What's that? Oh, nothing. Just a small detail that he's completely useless to the movie. And do you know why? Because all his scenes of Sightwai could have easily and rightfully been done with Sunset? Or, like you said, they could have just not tried romance at all. But my point is, what did he actually do in the movie? Sunset and her friends were the ones who helped Sai Twai along, and Sunset was the one that pushed Sai Twai to embrace her magic and vanquish Midnight Sparkle out of her subconscious. And it was her along with her friends that defeated Gaia Everfree. Not only that, Glorioso was the one working her ass off to make sure Camp Everfree stayed afloat while Timber was just... there. Seriously, remove Timber and not only does the story stay the same, but it would actually make Gloriosa stronger as a character. Yes! Yes it would! And it would lean to more scenes of Sunset and Satwai, and I'm all about that. Well, of course. But, consider this. By removing Timber, now Gloriosa is all alone and running Camp Everfree and trying to keep it afloat so Filthy Rich can't buy it. This would add sympathy to her character for how hard she's working and how much pressure she's under to keep from losing something she loves. By being alone, her choosing to feed off the magic of the discount Infinity Stones would have actually been more powerful because she has no other choice. She couldn't run the camp by herself, and she was gonna lose it. That way, when Saitwai and Sunset find out, it could represent friends discovering another friend has turned to drinking or doing drugs to cope with how hard their lives have become instead of Timber just whining to Glorioso about using them. If this were the case, I honestly would not blame her for choosing this. People do desperate things in desperate times. So basically the whole movie would just be better without him. Gloriosa would have a much stronger character arc, and there would be many more sunlight moments than there already are in the movie. Everybody wins! As much as my racing attitude hates hearing that, yes, both sides, the sunlight shippers, and the people who appreciate well-written stories would be happy. So then, how do we go about erasing him from this movie? And reality. With this. Turpentine, acetone, benzene. He calls it the dip. Excellent. So, is there anything else we can add about why Sunset deserves Sidetwai more than Timber? Well, there is this. Now, 
maybe I am reading too much into that, but I know I've never flushed it in my friends for no reason that I can tell. It's a small bit, but it shows once again that those two have more chemistry in that little moment than Saitwa and Timber had in the entirety of the movie. Which is why I'm going to stay a sunlight shipper through and through. Well then, if that's all, I'm going to go catch some sleep after all that damn traveling to get home. Thanks again for watching my shop, Blackbird. No problem. I'm going to head out and get some rest myself before my next video, which is, huh, now that I think about it, the 50th episode of Pony Talk. Neat. Hey, we both have special videos then. My next video will be my 69th overall video. 69. Meh. Anyway, join me next time when I try to answer the question of, is being too positive a bad thing? Until then, I'm Blackbird, and I'll see you again for more Pony Talk. And I'm Mr. Left Turn. I'll see you when I get back from the track. One minute you're waiting for the sky to fall And next you're dazzled by the beauty of it all Lovers in a dangerous time Lovers in a dangerous time. <laughs> Mom?